This is a super exciting day because the new water box tank is finally here. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now I've been waiting for this tank for a while and prepping for this build for ages and today is finally the day that's going to happen. So sit back, relax, and let's get this build started. Oh, there's a lot of goodies in here. Sexy. How about all these goodies? Even has these pre installed. That is a nice touch. Now, if you guys ever installed any flat pack furniture, it's gonna be similar. You got your pegs and your little kind of spinny pieces. So, pretty easy concept to install them and set them up. And look at this sexy glass. Now this was not light to bring up the stairs, but it is a whole lot of three quarter inch glass. But it is mighty sexy. So 19 mil glass, like this is some thick stuff. And this thing is built like a tank. Now all the seams are like perfectly kind of seamed in silicone, uh, no bubbles. If I take a look at all these edges, you got that nice perfect black seam down it and it looks wicked. And if you look on the inside, there's basically no silicone on the inside. So there's nothing even here with the razor. There's super tight seams, which looks really cool. And even the sump and ATO, same thing. They're all like beautiful, nice little seams. It's all polished glass. So really, really sexy. Like I'm super impressed with the quality of this, even the ATO. Same thing, it's all polished glass. So super duper sexy. Um, we got this middle baffle where this thing can slide out. Again, that's all glass. Like it's super crazy. But yeah, whole thing. So very flexible, kind of cool that this comes out so you can have a big chamber or you can kind of keep it separated. So it gives you a lot of options. And yeah, even this, same thing, all glass, all cut out. So really, really impressed with the sump and everything. It's gorgeous design and all the polished edges. There's a leveling mat on it. The ATO, same thing, leveling mat on it. Tank, leveling mat all on everything. So really, really cool. Now for the tank itself, I did end up putting a board underneath it. And I did that just so make sure it was perfectly level, just cause part of it would have been on the trim edge for the carpet. So there is five eighths plywood underneath. I did paint it white. Um, it's a little slipperier on it. So I might put a little trim piece on the side just to kind of lock it in. Um, so playing with that, once the tank's on it, really all that weight's probably gonna keep it in place. But, so I did that. So the stand's almost built. I haven't put the doors on yet, just so it's a little easier to move it and tweak it. But it is going to be so sweet. So, super excited. I'm gonna have to get some helpers in order to put the tank on it, because it does not light. But the light bar is installed. If you look at the wall, I use some of these L brackets to kind of bolt it to the wall. And I got four of them, so two lower, two higher and it makes this bar nice and stable. 
So once I get some help to put the tank on, and we can start getting this baby filled. It is on the stand and looking fabulous. Now the next big fun project is going to be get the clarity into the sock hole. So I'm going to use a razor blade and cut out the socks and make space for the clarity filter roller. So next on the project list is we're going to make this clarity filter roller fit into the sump. Um, and I feel bad with cutting this because it was a gorgeous sump. Beveled edges, nice polish, everything, black silicone, looks really slick. But I am a fan of the filter roller. So let's get out our razor blades and we're going to cut out a couple of these baffles and make it fit. Now, as long as you're using a nice fresh new razor blade, it's fairly easy to cut the silicone. So we're just going to do a bit of the loops around it and break that bond so we can pop out the sock holders. Now, I mean, this is a really nice design for filter socks and especially having the four socks, the kind of four filter socks that go through multiple layers. So it's a good way to do it. So if you don't have a filter roller, it's an excellent option for you. Now silicone and glass is a really good bond. So this one will be a little more work than the acrylic to get out, but we'll get there. Now I'm going to quickly build the Claire C just to figure out how much space we need exactly to set it up. Now I do have one of these on my other tank, so I do know kind of exactly how to build it. So it should speed it up quite a bit. Hopefully we'll find out. Do, do, do. Drop it down the middle and hopefully this will be strong enough and not break. Look at that. All right, one chunk out, a rat. All right, I've been fighting this panel for ages and I give up, so we're breaking it. This is tough. Now, unfortunately, as I smack with the hammer, there's this little tiny stress crack right there. You can't really feel it, but it does give me a little bit of concern. Um, so, in retrospect, I should not have been smacking with the hammer. It was a terrible idea. Uh, I should use the glass cutter and then took it out that way. So, lesson learned. Use a glass cutter. So to remedy this, what I'm going to do is near where the end of the crack is. Um, you can't, you can't even really feel it, so it's not too bad. But like a windshield, it can potentially spread. So I'm going to drill a little tiny hole at the end of it with just like a diamond drill bit. And providing it doesn't spread any further, I'm going to use one of the good baffles that actually came out nicely. And silicone the heck out of it as essentially a giant patch in the bottom. So by doing this, rather unfortunate, but it's going to be very minimal and you probably won't even notice it once it's kind of patched up. So a bunch of silicone all over the bottom, all on the edges and one giant kind of baffle patch. So hopefully that will do the job and no one will even really notice afterwards. Ta-da! 
filter through. Come on. All right, so we got our hole, which means it will stop that crack from spreading any further. And now we can glue our silicone or glass on, which will patch the hole, and we'll be back in business. Good job, Dad. Beautiful. Thank you. And wiping everything down with rubbing alcohol, and then we're gonna use some 100% black silicone, smear it all over that, and glue our panel in, which is gonna seal that crack, and we'll be back in business. And the lid drop. Okay. Now we have our plumbing parts. Um, so I'm likely gonna have to adapt one of the drains for the clarity. So we will have to deal with that. Uh, looks like we've got a check valve on one of these. Another looks like one of our main drains. Got a gate valve to adjust it. So this is likely the one we'll have to adapt. Another drain. Your, probably our standpipe or our second overflow. That one's likely our return. Um, so today we're gonna add some power to the stand. So we already have our wire ran. Um, I'm gonna mount a little plug box inside of the stand. So we've got a little service mount one. Uh, we've got two ground fault plugs. So just in case, always safe to use these around tanks. And um, now next, I also got my little power tester. We're gonna make sure that the power is off so we don't get ourselves zapped. So I'm gonna put this on and go figure out which breaker it is. Now we have two different circuits in here. Uh, so our black and our red are each a different circuit and our white's gonna be our common neutral. So one plug is gonna get the red, one plug is gonna get the black, and we're gonna jump the white between the two sockets. So some plugs. I think I'm gonna mount this actually on the bottom, which is gonna free up the most amount of space in there and basically make it impossible for water to get in this box. Because anything that, even something was to leak or splash it, it would drip downwards and it'd never get inside the receptacle. Also important, make sure your screws cannot get through the wood fully. Um, so this is less than the width of the wood. Also counting that little flange on it. It's gonna be lots of kind of a safety factor. So it should only be about halfway through. So here comes the fun part, we're gonna start adding salt. So I have the two MP60s on, they're about 30% right now. Um, the tank's obviously still filling, but I'm gonna start slowly working it up to a proper salinity. And once we got it up to roughly the right salinity, then I can start adding rocks and whatnot to the tank. So we're just gonna let the Vortec powerheads do our mixing for us. That should be gonna be a cool way to see the flow too. Now all the major things are done, the tank is coming along more and more every single day and I'm super stoked for how it's coming along. It's looking absolutely amazing in here and I can't wait to get some livestock inside. So as always guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next update.